Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Alma and this is Eternal Bliss. I want to kick off this video by thanking everyone who has submitted questions which I will be addressing in future videos and also who has left positive feedback and comments on my Facebook page, on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, thank you so much for all of your feedback and for watching these videos and reading my blogs. Today's video is actually based on a really, really, really cool subject, my favorite topic, one of my favorite things to do, and that is tarot reading. Uh, this video is based on a blog I wrote, I believe it's called An Insider's Look into Tarot Reading. I will be providing a link in the comment box below. So let's kick this off. Um, I have been reading tarot since I was 14, so yes, that was a while ago. And I actually still have my first, uh, my very first deck ever. Um, this was a present, and it's one of my favorite decks because it's my first deck and it's very comfortable. It's a little old and tattered, but it fits perfectly in my hands and I love it. Uh, this is not just a bunch of paper cards. This is actually a divine tool that helps me connect uh, to source and to be a vessel for communication and messages. So I really do cherish this deck. My second deck that I use um, out of the hundreds of thousands of decks that are out there in the market, I only have three. The first one I showed you and this one. This one is called Animal Divine. Um, you can see a polar bear. And this deck actually features animals as well as gods and goddesses. This would be the challenge card. Um, this would be Horus representing the sun. And I do apologize for the light. I know it's not very flattering on these cards, but it's flattering on me. Just kidding. Um, this is the next deck. And this deck is really cool. This is my favorite deck. This one is the Ascendant Masters deck. This is uh, by Doreen Virtue. And it's very, very beautiful. The artwork on this is just stunning. And uh, this is actually an oracle deck. Every card uh, has a divine message. And in my experience, every time I pull one of these cards, I, I'm just stunned by the message the divine sends to my client or to myself because I do give myself readings. So this is a, a really great deck. I'll show you one more card. So in my blog, I talk about um, not, this is not a tutorial, first of all. This is not a tutorial on how to read the tarot. Actually, this is just a video to talk about how I read the tarot personally, um, my favorite spreads, my favorite decks, and some of the most common questions I, I am asked. So the way I begin my session is actually by clearing my inner space, so clearing out any thoughts and also grounding. I do ground myself. I try to empty out all of the chit chat that is happening in my mind because it's very important when you do a reading that you are as, as clean and clear and precise as possible. You have to become a vessel, a channel for that information. So it is very important to ground and to center before beginning any type of reading. So after that initial step, I of course shuffle my deck. So I will grab whichever deck I select intuitively, which is usually this one because I love it so much. So after I shuffle my cards, I clear out the energies, I get a feel, I relax, I focus, then I hand the cards over to my client and then the client shuffles them, parts them, uh, puts them into a single mount once again and I ask that he places his right hand over the cards like this and then I place my own hand I will not place but hover my hand over his like this and then I begin to feel his energy um, I am what would be considered an empath which means that I can feel and um, experience the feelings of others so I do allow myself for that instant to open up and feel what this person, the client, is feeling. I allow myself to get into that same space so that I can understand the situation better and address all questions properly. 
So after we do the little energy exchange, I ask the client to shuffle the cards again, continue thinking and focusing only on that question and nothing else, and then part the cards again, fold them into a mount, and then place the opposite hand over like this, while I place my hand over like this. As I hover it, I once again open myself up to that energy, allow myself to feel what the client is feeling, and then we begin the session. So the next step is actually to lay out the cards. So my favorite layout is a seven card spread. And um, I will be sharing some, of, some pictures from the spreads in my blog. So if uh, you're curious about what the seven card spread looks like, as well as a three card, four card, even 12 card spread, make sure to check out my blog. And like I mentioned earlier, the description is in the box below. So make sure to click on that link. Um, so once I lay the cards out, one by one I begin to unfold them. So I will lay them face down and then I flip them and I see which card shows up. And as I interpret the meanings one by one, it's like a story. It's almost like I'm narrating a movie. Um, I do use my third eye to give readings, which means that I can intuitively see and know, understand, feel what the situation is. Uh, I do get flashes and pictures of the person's uh, life or, or that specific happening that uh, is driving that question. So for example, let's say that a client will ask, um, I'm going on a trip, what should I consider or what can I expect? Then sometimes I will see flashes of um, certain warnings or certain things that might come up and um, so as I, I, I am interpreting I do try to be as clean and clear and precise as possible to not have any bias to not give him any information that I'm making up or that I'm just assuming because that's very irresponsible when you're a tarot reading reader you have to be very integrated and very responsible the message that you convey can be taken very very seriously and can affect or change a person's life so if you are a reader or an aspiring reader please be responsible for what you're saying be integrated and only give out messages that you are receiving not your own opinion not your own two cents so after we're done with the reading i ask if there's any more questions if we have any doubts or anything was unclear then i do place an extra card next to the original so let's say that for example, this is one of the cards that the client was unclear about. So it'll be here on the table and then I will place another one next to it and see and that would support the message. So after we're done, um, the next step I do as an empath and how I can project and feel others energy, I ground myself, I begin to slowly ground and calm myself down. Uh, because sometimes there might be a lot of exchange of energy and I might feel a little jittery or spacey. So as I'm bringing myself down, I'm also projecting my peace and, and grounding energies onto my client so that the client um, will be in a clear-headed space once they have to drive back home, obviously. So after that step, once we're done with the reading and the client has uh, left for his home, then I myself do extra grounding. I make sure I shake off any energies that I do not want to keep with me. And I might take a ritual bath with oils or with gemstones. I might sage myself to get rid of any unwanted energies. I'll also have a light snack um, and some liquids to settle me down. And then everything comes back to normal. So overall, the reading is always a, a joy. It's so much fun. I love it. It's exciting. And I always feel like it's such an honor to be able to bring some insight and clarity into another person's life. So that's all I have for you today. If you have any more questions or if you want more detailed pictures, uh, please make sure to check out my blog. I do have more info and I also have um, a lot of other articles in which I talk about spirituality and my own personal journey as well as my adventures in India and a lot of great wisdom by my own guru, Paramahamsa Nityananda, that might come in handy in your life. So thank you for watching, and until next time, see ya.